everybody. Um, I'm Robert, and I'm back with Adam and Kevin. Adam and Kevin, switch that around. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, the thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, both of you look really young, and so coming into, especially being a director of photography and even camera, it, it's seasoned with a lot of older male people, and even now it's starting to become you know females and stuff like that, but how do you guys deal with sometimes being your age and not giving the respect that uh, to the knowledge that you guys have? That's an interesting question. I mean, I, I don't know if I ever like really dealt with that. I, I think it's more of a um, kind of like a knowledge and like paying your dues thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel, you know, you, you start, you kind of start at the bottom and you work your way up, you learn, you, you know, you PA, you grip, you gaff. And I, I feel it's, it's more of that than it is an age. Like, I don't care if you're 25 or, you know, 32, it's just, you know, no, having the knowledge. So mm -hmm. if you have the knowledge at 25, that's great. You know, I don't, I, personally, I've never had to, I've never had somebody be like, oh, well, you're too young. I was lucky. I was fortunate. I've been working in the industry since I've been like 22. So I guess I'm not the best person to answer that right. question. Oh, so, right. So I'm 24 and yeah. I love that. I, I really like that I'm a young dude and I can do it. And I think it's more how you carry yourself and an attitude kind of thing. So in film, you're working long hours, 12, 15 hour days, and it's really who you want to spend your time next to. So if you're a dude that people want to hang out with and you're fun to be around, right. it really helps, as opposed to some curmudgeon old dude. <laughs> curmudgeon old dude. That's true. I mean, but I, I, it's I, true. I, I mean, so, but what, I mean, sometimes even the older dudes, I've, I mean, they, they have good jokes sometimes. Oh no, definitely. Yeah. It's their dad jokes at that point. Yeah, though. I mean, yeah. I also feel we're. I mean, we both are from New York. We're like East Coast. Right, I feel like right. there's a lot of more like there's a lot more television, reality TV out there, and it's all young. It's all. Is it? You know, it's it's. It's not like here where it's like film and you know a narrative, and you have a lot of like the old timers that like you know are the only ones that get the jobs. Like where we are, it's it's whoever has the most hustle. Definitely. Like right. that, I mean, that's the thing. If you hustle, you work your ass off. You know, if you, you know, if, if you just have the charisma, like you're gonna get work out there because there's so there's so much. Oh wow. So so basically, I mean, and paying the dues. That's interesting. <clears throat> is there is is there anything that you feel? Would be beneficial to somebody that wants to get into gripping camera, um, uh, camera DPing, like like the number one quality they have to have so they get noticed. Uh, I got one. Okay, you go first. Show up early, all the time, every time. So what, wait, wait, so what, what's the definition of early on on a set? Okay, well, what's the call time? Call time. Let's say it's ten. Let's say the call time's. Oh, 10. I'd be there at nine. I'd be in my car, nine. ready, just hanging out, just waiting. I would have said like nine thirty. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. gonna say. Yeah, I, I usually usually is, what is, it's it's fifteen minutes before you're on time well, when your call time is late. Depends on traffic. Depends on yeah. all these different factors. Right. So if I'm there at nine, I know I'm good. That's true. true. That's very true. I think. I mean, the best the best thing I ever learned, you know, about DPing was I feel like anybody who wants to go into camera work should have to be an editor for at least two years. Really? I feel like the other side. Yeah. I feel like knowing the other side and knowing how to edit, knowing how to put a story together will make you a will make you better in the field because you can think like an editor and you can know what you want and you're not gonna be shooting all this extra stuff that you don't actually need. Huh. For me, I started as an editor and I feel like that has helped me more than anything else. Oh wow. Because Definitely. I think about the story and I think about what I'm gonna need. Are you cut it you're basically cutting it? I'm cutting in, in my head and I can you know, I don't need to waste time on stuff that I know is not gonna work or oh, wow. it's not gonna happen. Right. Along the same lines, you should all have some kind of a grip or gaff background, so you know lights, you know where they should go, how to modify them, right. the whole thing. Right. I mean, that's the definition. You know, as a director of photography, you are directing the photography, you're, and you are in charge of everyone else doing, you know, setting the lights and you know creating the look. And if you don't know how to use the tools yourself, you're going to be pretty useless. At, you right. know, how, how do you actually tell someone to yeah. move a light? Or you're not going to be able to execute. Light. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And so, and then on top of that, like. And then back, kind of back to technology and or back to the equipment. How much do you have to learn to keep up on it? Do you, can you can you learn the basics and just go far with that, or do you have to keep up with new lights that are coming out, um, the new cameras and the new techniques, or if there are, I mean, are there any new techniques coming out, things like that? Well, I think you should always be up on the new technology to be relevant. You know, there's so it, it's evolving so quickly now that there's, you know, where you would normally use an HMI you know, an 18K to light a scene, these sensors are so sensitive now that you can, you know, get away with like doing a night scene with a bunch of LEDs. So I think like knowing the new technology, you can be more efficient and more cost effective for productions. 
But what, and how about like with camera operating? Like, I mean, how many cameras do you know how to operate? Oh, a slew of them. <laughs> right. But, I mean, it's also if you are up on technology, you're the young whippersnapper that can be like, oh, have you heard of this thing? Have you heard of this? Right. Exactly. And the older guys are like, no, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> what, what is this red? But I'll keep here? you around right. because you seem to know what you're talking about. Yeah, and you do see that. And you, you see the little attitude from the old. I call them old timers, the old timers, when they're like, you know, you show up with like, let's say a C300, it's a small little camera. Right. And then, you know, they got, they they're have their like, huge Lebeda cams and like, they're like, oh, that's cute. What are you doing? <laughs> you're like, you're yeah, like, that's not a real camera. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, a toy. So you, do, I, I, I personally think like keeping up with the technology keeps you relevant. Oh, wow. Awesome. Definitely. Like I spend probably an hour or two every day just getting up on my camera news. And it's not work to me. It's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Right. But it, I'm it's, a it's a leisure time, re it's a leisure time read. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, I have a couple more questions, so we'll be back after this.